is Nano Nuclear Energy CEO James Walker. James, welcome. This got a lot of people interested. It, at Fox Business, we said we got to get you on because we know there are troubles with the grid. We know that nuclear is a clean energy. First, tell our viewers what your Zeus nano reactors look like. Explain how they work. So the, the idea with these reactor systems is we want to make a reactor as small as we possibly can. So we're using some innovative technology, we've removed the primary coolant to, to enable us to shrink these things right down to an ISO container size. And the, the idea here is that we want to be able to ship this thing anywhere in the world to any remote location. And you mentioned uh, uh, disaster relief just a second ago too, and this is one of the areas we want to put it. It's not just mining projects, remote habitation, island communities. Um, like Andrew Cuomo recently joined our board of advisors and he said that when uh, Puerto Rico was hit by hurricanes and power was out, um, you know, he shipped a load of diesel generators there, but if he had this option at hand, he would have shipped micro reactors because more consistent power, clean, and you don't know how long a rebuilding effort is going to take. So if it's going to take a number of okay. years, you, yeah, you, can, you can use these things. So. These things are on the screen. They look like trucks, I don't know, 18-wheelers or semis, and they have a nuclear power plant better, uh, uh, right, right attached onto them. So they could roll into, let's just say, Francine, Hurricane Francine hit areas right now, and how quickly could they power up people's homes? So the idea here is that it would be almost immediate. <clears throat> we want to ship these things in, put, it, put them down, plug them into the microgrid, and start outputting energy. So we're trying to avoid all of the capital expenditure of infrastructure at the other end. Um, just stay within an ISO container. Nothing's going to come out. It'll go in, put down, plug in, and let's get some power out of it. You are developing them right now. When could these, I guess, micro-reactors hit the roads? So um, we, we're, we're through all the design work now, and we're going to some physical experiments work just to build up that prototype. Um, that prototype will need to undergo a licensing um, procedure with the NRC. Um, once that licensing is complete, um, we'll be looking to try and deploy these things around about 2030, 2031 as a commercial product. But we'll be, we'll be confident of uh, um, the commercialization of these things sometime around about 2027, 2028. So. Hold on, James. <laughs> and, and I love your optimism, but the biggest problem with nuclear power plants has been the permitting process. It takes something like 20 years to even get approval to start building. What makes you think that the government would allow people to strap a nuclear reactor onto the back of a truck that can drive around? And I, I'm sure they're, you're making them safe, but I mean, this could take a longer time, could it not? Well, I'm glad you mentioned the government because they need nuclear power now. They're in a bind where um, that's why there's so much bipartisan yeah. support for these things. So they have now issued a mandate on the regulator to make sure the licensing process is reduced to a maximum of 25 months. So that's, that's actually from the government already. So once we put in for, mm -hmm. uh, one, and look, even my timeline there, 2030, 2031, doesn't even account for that reduction in time. So um, the mandate comes through, 25 month licensing process. Because in the, in the past, there's been um, barriers put up to nuclear power and they're trying to remove them now because there's a glut on energy. Right. And when you say bipartisan, uh, the Advance Act, which President Biden signed into law July 9th, I believe, had an 88 to 2 vote for it in the House. We don't get to see too many bipartisan yeah. votes like that uh, here in, in the United States, in our government, certainly. Uh, we got to talk about the, the energy suck from these data centers that are used to power AI. Uh, just yesterday, CEOs from NVIDIA, OpenAI, and Anthropic met on Capitol Hill at the White House to discuss the need for increasing the energy supply. How serious is the drain on the grid from these data centers? Oh, the, these things are in very energy hungry and they're getting exponentially energy hungry. So even the tech industry is facing not being able to advance further by about 2027, 2028 because they're running out of power. Like uh, Trump even spoke about it recently a couple weeks ago and he said he's, he's thrown in his support for these small modular reactors, saying that he expected the power um, requirements within the country to double based on these um, these very hungry tech industries. But I think he's actually being conservative. It's probably going to be even more than that. We're going to need to, a substantial amount of energy to power these yeah. things. So. Um, I do have to ask about safety. Uh, and besides, <clears throat> our viewers, this is an investor audience. They watch the stock, which has done an unbelievable, uh, I guess, high jump this week alone because you made a, an acquisition that is helping to build up the company ahead of these trucks. But 
Uh, where's the energy, the, the nuclear energy? Is it uranium is inside these trucks? It is, yep. So there's going to be uh, there's going to be uranium inside these trucks. Obviously, we don't want to re re remove it. And at the moment, the NRC is even making provisions that you can move a fully fueled reactor by road. And typically, you would have shipped the reactor separately and then fueled at site. And that's that's even being amended because there's enormous pressure now on the infrastructure of the states to have more power. So all of these allowances are being made for this. And you mentioned safety, and I. I always like to say that if you look at something like deaths per gigawatt hour, nuclear beats out everything anyway. It's already the safest form of energy, beats out wind, beats out solar. And if you start shrinking a reactor down in size to what we're doing, it gets safer and safer still because the mechanical complexity goes down. Passive cooling features come into it where the, the, the disaster scenarios with a big reactor are impossible. Um, so it's, it gets safer and safer. Yeah. Safest power source gets safer and safer still. I think the world is getting used to feeling okay about nuclear energy, and uh, the stock is very interesting. Uh, when we started the conversation, it was up 15%. It's up 22% right now, so there's a oh. lot of interest. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Maybe I should credit you for that, but uh, obviously that's wonderful to hear. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Listen, what, we just tell the story and investor viewers get to make their choice. But James, please come back. We want to watch the development of these trucks. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Looking forward to be back.